Hello and welcome. This is question five for um, June 2014 uh, AQA C3 paper. Um, now this pa this particular question is just about functions. Um, it's about ranges, domains, inverse functions and uh, combining functions. So they're the uh, three sort of subtopics really. So if you're unfamiliar with this question and you want to revise the topics, they're the topics to go back and look at. Okay, so I've done these in NX obviously, so you want to learn another one, it's up to you. Uh, anyway, so let's kick off with uh, what we're going to be doing. So, we're going to find the range of f. Now, more specifically, it's finding the range of f of x. Now, there's no clear cut way of doing this in terms of without paying attention to the full question. There's nothing we can do. Now, the first thing I tried to do when I first tried to do this question is I thought, well, okay, because it's a quadratic, I'll try to factorise it. Well, now, because it says here, um, x has to be larger than, larger than or equal to 3. So the smallest it can be is 3, and it can be anything larger than 3 because it goes an infinite amount, it goes up to anything. So we need to use that bit of information. Now, what was said, what, basically, if we draw this graph, I'm not saying it's going to look like this, but if it did, it'd look something like this. So the y-intercept of 5, it, it might look something like this. Okay. So if that's the graph, this sort of little curve here, then if x is greater than or equal to 3, it's never less than 3, say 3 is the first intercept, then we're never going to see anything on the left-hand side of 3. Well, we're not, it doesn't matter what curve it is, we're not going to see. So therefore, why... I've not, that's not drawn real brilliantly, so I'm going to emphasise it. But something like that. And if, if it's on the left of 3, nothing's going to be on the left of 3. So y is always going to be bigger than whatever that value is there. Okay? So basically, what I'm trying to say is... Okay, we, we know this point is x is at 3, but we don't know... If y is 0 at that point, or y is minus 4, we need to work out what y is when x is 3. So, what we simply do is sub in x to be 3 um, into this equation. However, it doesn't matter to me, oh, just to confuse you. So, it'll be the f of 3, so 3 squared, 9, take 6 times 3, which is 18, plus 5. That all comes to minus 4, therefore y is greater than or equal to minus 4. Okay, all we've done is use the same um, idea that we, uh, yeah, so it's just substituting the values in, really. Um, now, in terms of writing y, uh, the marking does say f of x, but if you say f of x equals y, you'll get away with that. Um, Though, you know, you might get the snotty examiner that uh, wants to, you to fail at everything in life. So, uh, I mean, you know, I'd just confuse you there. Basically, it's a good idea just to put f of x. Alright? Okay, so, hopefully that diagram kind of helps you. Um, all we're saying is, we need to look at what... Because it's always going to be increasing. Quadratic never, it never decreases. It never does something like that. That's more of a cubic, really. So, you can always say y is going to be greater. Say if this is our x equals 3 point there, then it doesn't matter what x is, y is always going to be greater than minus 4, or whatever y is at that point, which worked out to be minus 4. So that's why we can just assume that. Um, if we were talking about quadratic, obviously you couldn't just do that, but um, I don't think they'd ask you. If, if they were to ask you for the range of, a, of something, of a function that happened to be a quadratic, um, then they would give you some side information, which leave you with that. Okay, so the next part says, uh, so we know f of x equals, first thing I'd do is write it out, because I'm just lazy, I'm going to waste some time. I'm really lazy, yeah. So x squared takes 6x plus 5, and we want to know what the inverse function is, f to the minus 1 x. Now, the way of finding the function is to rearrange the function to make x a subject um, and then turning it back on its head saying, so basically what we're doing is rewrite f of x, c 
So y equals x squared, take 6x plus 5. Make x the subject, and then when you've done that, change the y's to x's, and then that is your inverse function, because it's, it's just a, a messed up wave. That's the way I think of it. I'm pretty, me uh, pretty messed up in the mind, so works for me. Right. However, you're not the more eagle-eyed person, or person who's actually paying attention, uh, will have spotted we've got a bit of a problem here. We've got a quadratic. Now, the first thing you would think of, oh, well, factorise it. Well, if we did factorise it, let's go from that, let's, this is what I ended up doing, we'll get x plus 1, and don't, this isn't right, by the way, um, equals y. Now, we're not told y equals 0, so we can't say, well, x is minus 1 and x is 5. And even if we did know that, that wouldn't give us the inverse function. That would just say where the intercepts are. So we can't, there's no point factorising it. Because uh, I guess you could say, oh, well, you can make x subject by dividing both sides by x plus 1 uh, and x plus 5. But you'd get yourself into a right mess. And I wouldn't bother with that. Um, because it's just going to, there's a lot easier, there's a much easier method. So hopefully that's proved to you why we don't factorise it. Right. So just need to go back to C1, I uh, know, uh, again, I did that in Excel, we did um, quadratics in C1, I'm assuming you did that as well, um, uh, you're doing AQA, I'm assuming, so, we had a couple of ways for solving quadratics, now, we, the most common one we just tried there was factorising, well that didn't work, so what other methods have we got that we can solve a quadratics? Well the one that's going to be most applicable here is, um, completing the square. Now, again, you may have done this, I'm going to do this a long way, uh, so leave the y bit as equal that. So what you do is you do x squared, take 6x, you half the, what's in front of just the x, which is 6x comes to 3, um, uh, minus 3, sorry, and then you square it, minus 3 times minus 3, so say 9, plus 9, and you take that away, minus 9, plus 5, you put a bracket round the x squared, from the x squared up to uh, the plus 9 and then what you do is x and then x take sorry <coughs> made a mess of this already so x take and then you half this so whatever whatever this is here so it's minus 6 and minus 3 and then that's all squared and they might be simplified plus 5 and minus 9 minus 4. So that's why we, that's completed the square. But how do we go from there? I did talk about the, we've got a quadratic here so it's something squared. It's x squared. Remember this x is just a number at the end of the day. So what we need to do to get x a subject, it, we could expand this out but if you did that you'd just end up with this when you simplified it all. So that's why completing the square is a way of solving it because it's just putting it in a different format. Now, as I said, you don't expand that. You do the opposite, um, sort of. So what we need to do here is add 4 to both sides. So therefore we get y plus 4 is equal to x take 3 all squared. Square root both sides so we can get x on its own at some stage. So therefore it's plus or minus the square root of y plus 4 equals x take 3. Rearrange this to get x as a subject, so x is 3 plus or minus root y plus 4. Okay, so that's your answer. That's in the simplest form. Um, now you could write y plus 4 to the power of half, but uh, that is completely acceptable as well. So as you can see, it's a lot easier than factorising it. We wouldn't not have to do that much more. Okay. Well, yeah, you could use a quadratic formula, but it uh, just gets you uh, the intercepts. It doesn't help you rearrange anything. Sorry, I should have mentioned that's all. Okay, so the next question is a, is a lot easier. Well, that was pretty easy, but this is fairly standard as well. It's quite a nice question. Um, what we're actually find now is g of f of x. Now, what we're saying is um, instead of g of 3 or whatever you may have, um, basically, it's 
the first thing you do is write G and then you write whatever this f of x function is, which is x squared takes 6x plus 5, and you write that wherever you see x in the G function. Now this G function here is x takes 6, so it's G, if you write the function out, so you G, put G f of x, so G, G of the x squared takes 6x plus 5, and then you write that in the modulus sign, so that's x squared takes 6x plus 5, and that's takes 6. Okay, because that's essentially saying that's x. Alright, so if you simplify this down, that gets you x squared, take 6x, take 1, and that's g of f of x. Okay, so all we've done so far um, is wrote in the formula. Alright, and that's all we're asked to do for the first part of the um, equation. We're not asked to do anything else with that. This is C part 2 where we're asked to. So, go on to C part 2. Now we're told to solve this is equal to 6. So, G f of x equals x squared take 6x take 1. And we're told that equals 6. Now, to solve that, um, because we've got a modulus and a just a normal number, now we know what that is, that can't change. Um, we just use, uh, sorry, actually, we're going back one second. So if we've got two moduluses, we square both sides um, and then simplify it down, and that's how we get our answer. However, when we've got a modulus and a normal number, because um, the modulus, remember, just turns it positive. So if it's negative, so this x squared takes 6x is a point. If that was negative, then it would have been the same as if that was positive. So we have to do it both scenarios. So basically, you have to times this all by plus a positive, uh, positive one, and then times it all by negative one, and get the two answers together, and we should come up with an answer. So I'm probably going to need a bit of room in a minute. Uh, so anyway, do the positive first. So we just times positive. So uh, t positive one times x squared takes six x plus one. So that just gets us weirdly enough x squared takes six x take one equals six. Uh, simplify this down, so make it equal to zero. Take, so x squared takes 6x, and we take 6 right from, from both sides, that's minus 7, um, equals zero. Factorise that, so that's obviously going to get us x um, takes 7, and x plus 1 equals to zero. And then we get x squared, so we have to times this all by negative, but just write it in brackets. So negative times x squared takes 6x take 1 equals 6, so there's negative x squared plus 6x plus 1 equals 6. Um, now what you could do is make this equal to 0 and then switch it round, so you get the, po I was like having a positive x squared, uh, but it, you could do it, it works either way. Um, so make, make it equal to 0, so x squared plus 6x, take away 6 on both sides, take it to minus 5 equals 0. Uh, and then you make the x squared positive by moving all over the other side. So basically, all the signs change. So x squared takes 6x plus 5 equals 0. Simplify this down. So x take 5, x take 1 equals 0. So what you do is you, because we've got our two scenarios here now, so we just say, well, on this one, x equals 5 or x equals 1. And in this case, x equals 7 or x equals minus 1. So that's your answer to g of f of x equals 6. Basically, what it's saying is if you put 5, 1, 7 or minus 1 into this equation um, of g of f of x, you put it into this equation, then you would end up with positive 6. Because remember, all that does is turn it positive. Okay? So that's question five out of the way. It's quite a nice and simple question, really. I mean, you can double check that if you want. Um, but, you know, I'm quite competent in this kind of thing, I'd like to think. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense to you. So thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully it's been of some help. And uh, we'll see you in another video sometime. Probably question six, I thought. But, yeah. If you can spare yourself through that one. See you later. Thanks for watching.